So good morning everyone. We are the next group reporters that will discuss the psychological perspective. But before we proceed to our topic, let me first introduce our group reporters, or I mean our group members. They are Josia Acuna, Jan Angelo Balbin, Erica May Kramen, Jake Divara, and Mardel Joy Villanueva. And I will be going to start to discuss our topic. So, the psychology of the self focuses on the representation of an individual based on her experiences. These experiences are either from home, school, and other groups, organizations, or affiliations he or she engaged in. Seemingly, the self is one of the most heavily researched areas in social and personal psychology, where the concepts are introduced that beyond our physical attributes lies our psychological identity. And from our current times, the concept of the self is always an interesting subject for the other because it centers the intrapersonal properties. So, the first discussion was about the self as a cognitive construction. So, when we say cognitive, it includes thinking, knowing, remembering, and judging. And when we say cognition, it is defined as the mental action or activity or a process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experiences, and the senses. So, cognitive construction is a cognitive approach that focuses on the mental processes rather than the observable behavior. This approach will assist individuals in assimilating new information through their existing knowledge and will enable to make the appropriate modification to their existing intellectual framework to accommodate their new information. So this means that this approach is focusing on critical thinking because through this approach, it will help a person on how he will be connecting their information that, that, they, have pre- that they previously got into their ideas that they have already in their own. It does not focus on observing things physically like they didn't believe in the saying of, what you see is what to believe, and we all know what does this means. So let's proceed to the next topic, which is the me as the self and I by William James. So William James suggested that the total self of me, being as it were duplex, and it is composed of partly object and partly subject. He differentiated the meaning of the self as me and I. And the word I is defined as the knower, and the word me was the self as known. Also, the word I is referred to the pure ego and suggested that this component is consciously itself, while the word me is one of the many things that I may be conscious of. And it is composed of three components. So you should remember these three components. These are the physical or material self. uh, And it consists of the things that belong to us. Things like the clothes, the money, and even our body is considered as material self. Social self is about our social selves of he of who we are in a given social situation. And the third one is the spiritual self, where it is the most intimate intimate self. The aspects of spiritual self includes the personality, the core values, and conscience that does not typically change throughout the lifetime. So let's proceed to the next reporter. Good day, everyone. So before I start my discussion, I will introduce first myself. My name is Jake Amante Divara. So the topic that is assigned for me is global versus differentiated models. In module 1D, which is the 
psychological perspective. So I will define first the global model self and differentiated model self. When we see global model self, it refers to the general value that a person places on himself or herself. Uh, ito ay tumutukoy sa pangkalahatang halaga na inilalagay ng isang tao sa kanyang sarili. This self-concept sits at the top of the hierarchical tree which then breaks into a number of smaller components such as academic, social, emotional, and physical self-concepts. The number and type of these components varies from one theory to another. According to Shavelson, Hubner, and Stanton, they said that the global model self refers to extent to one's perceptions of the self is clearly and consistently defined. So while differentiated model self, it refers to your ability to separate your own feelings and thoughts from others. Uh, ito naman ay tumutukoy sa yung kakayahang paghiwalayin ang yung sarili damdamin at iniisip mula sa iba. It also involves being able to possess and identify your own thoughts and feelings and distinguishing them from others. It's a process of not losing connection to self while holding a deep connection to others including those you love whose views may differ from yours. And there are 10 differentiated model self which are the self-consciousness, self-multiple, self-locking glass, self-structure, self as a flower, self as a creative, self as union, self as identity, self as unicorn, and self as chameleon. So the first one is the self-consciousness. Self-consciousness is the heightened of self-awareness. The second one is self-multiple. This is someone's rule is not being her or him, her, his or her responsibility and sense of self. The third one is self-locking glass. Other people serve as a mirror in which we can see our, ourselves. And also people develop sense of who they are and what to think of themselves by watching the reactions of the people in their primary group as well as those they meet throughout their lives. Self-structure. The self as that which can be an object of itself is essential a social structure and it arises in social experience. Then self as flower. The self in this view is like a flower potentially growing into full bloom. The self creative. Man is nothing else but he makes of himself. Then self as union. This model indicated by the praise hidden depths and reflect the notion that one may not really know someone just like the Kof Maniske presentation of the different selves acting in different rules and circumstances which may be camouflage and masks. The eighth one is self as identity. Our self concept is our identity. It is our concept you develop about yourself that evolves over the course of your life.
this may include the aspects of your life that you have no control over such as where you grew up or the color of your skin as well as choice choices you make in life such as how you spend your time and what you believe then the ninth one is self as unicorn it is a part of unknown even unknowable because it is so below consciousness and in progress then the last one is the self as chameleon the self as chameleon because it is a multiple mutable adaptable and selected presentation this selves may be complementary contradictory contradictory or conflicted there had been many postulations that oneself may be fragmented into different parts and different selves which may be in conflict or needs regulation from each other although w james gave a very interesting perspective on the self and was even among the first writers to coin the term self-esteem. Other theories emerged to study on the selfhood as an integrated part of one psyche. In the past 30 years, self-esteem has become deeply embedded in popular culture. So, self-esteem is, it is a person's overall self-evaluation or sense of self-worth. Or it is a confidence in one's own worth or abilities. So there are three kinds of self-esteem which are the global, state, and domain-specific self-esteem. So global self-esteem, also known as street self-esteem, is a personality variable that represents the way people generally feel about themselves. It is relatively enduring across time and situations. Ito ay isang nagbabago ng personalidad na kumakatawan sa karaniwang nararamdaman ng mga tao tungkol sa kanilang sarili. So according to researchers, uh, global self-esteem is a decision people make about their worth as a person it can be so it can be high but rather low in a specific situation or in relation to a specific activity for example you may have a high overall self-esteem and have a positive view of yourself as a what talent you have and yet have low self-esteem but communicating in a second language State self-esteem, also known as feelings of self-worth, refers to a temporary feelings or momentary emotional reactions to positive and negative events where we feel good or bad about ourselves during these situations or experiences. Ito naman ay tumutukoy sa mga pansamantalang damdamin o panandaliang emosyonal na reaksyon sa mga positibo at negatibong pangyayari kung saan maganda o masama ang pakiramdam natin sa ating mga sarili. Sa mga sitwasyon o karanasang ito. So according to Harten, Harterton and Polyvay, 1991, that self-esteem state is how we feel about or evaluate ourselves at a given point in a time. It is defined as the temporary fluctu fluctuations in self-esteem. For example, in assertive in expressing your needs and opinions and confident in your ability to make decisions. So the last is the domain-specific self-esteem also known as self-evaluations. It is focused on how people evaluate their various abilities and attributes. This is making distinctions or differentiation on how good or bad people are in specific physical attributes 
abilities and personal characteristics. Ito naman ay nakatuon sa kung paano sinusuri ng mga tao ang kanilang iba't ibang kakayahan at katangian. Uh, ito ay paggawa ng mga pagkakaiba sa kung gaano kabuti o masama ang mga tao sa mga partikular na physical na katangian at kakayahan. So, dominant specific self-esteem has a weaker relationship with overall psychological well-being because of its emphasis on a particular dimension, for example, academic, social, and athletic of the self. So, thank you. That's my report. That's all my report. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Janangel Balbin and I will be discussing about the real and ideal self concepts. The self as the regulating center of an individual's personality adds self as processes under the guise of ID, ego and superego functioning. Rock psychology as the biggest breakthrough in understanding the psychological self. From this milestone, Prominent psychologists followed with their own perspectives of the self to contest the roles and functions of ego as the self. These were the landmarks of contemporary psychology in the understanding of the internal processes of men. A group of psychologists called for renewed attention for inner experience, internal processes, and self-constructs. These pers perspectives assert the overall dignity and worth of human beings and their capacity for self-realization. One of the psychologists named Karen Horney, with her pe feminine psychology, established that a person has an ideal self, act actual self, and the real self. She believed that everyone experienced basic and anxiety through which we experience conflict and strive to cope and employ tension reduction approaches. Horney believed people develop a number of strategies to cope with basic anxiety. Because people feel inferior, an idea an, an idealized self image which is an inmate an imaginary picture of the self as the process of unlimited powers and superlative qualities is developed. <clears throat> On the other hand, the actual self, the person one is in everybody, everyday life, is often despised because it fails to fulfill the requirement of idealized image. Underlying both the idealized self and the actual self is the real self, which is revealed only as a person begins to shed the various techniques developed to deal with the basic anxiety and to find ways resolving conflicts. The real self is not an entity but a force that impels growth and self-realization. And also one of the psychologists named Carl Rogers, with his person-centered theory, established a concept of self involving the real self and ideal self. The real self includes all these aspects of one's being and one's experience that are perceived, perceived in awareness by the individual. It is part of ourselves where we feel, think, look, and act involving our self-image. On the other hand, the ideal self revolves around the goals and ambitions in life is dynamic. The ideal, idealized image that we have developed over time. This is what our parents have taught us considering that we admire in others what society promotes, what we think are in our best interest. A wide gap between the ideal self and the real self indicates incongruence and an unhealthy personality. If the way that I am 
the real self is aligned with the way that I want to be, which is the ideal self. Then I will feel a sense of mental well-being or peace of mind. If the way that I am is not aligned with now I want to be, the incongruence or lack of alignment will result in mental distress or anxiety. The greater the level of incongruence between the ideal and real self, the greater is the, is the level of resulting distress. That's all. So in this topic, we will tackle about the multiple versus unified selves. Postmodern psychology contends that a man has identity that shifts and morphs in different social situations and in response to different stimuli. As Kenneth Gergen argues that having a flexible sense of self in different contexts is more socially adaptable than force oneself to stick to one self-concept. Theorists believe that there is no answer to the question who am I as one person can undergo several transition in his life and create multiple versions of himself. However, there is still contention of the importance of mental well-being and maintaining a unified and centralized coherent self. Multiple selves, according to K. Gergen, the capacities we carry within us from multiple relationships. These are not discovered, but created in our relationship with other people. Multiple selves or multiple personas refers to different ways that individuals interact with the different situations and circumstances in their lives. For example, a person takes in these different styles of interaction as a parent, as an employee, as a friend, as a student, as a son or daughter, as a spouse. And in unified selves, a strongly pointed out in tradition psychology emphasizes that will be comes when our personal dynamics are congruent, cohesive, and consistent. It is understood that a person is essentially connected with selfhood and identity. In a healthy person, the ego remains at the helm of the mind, coherent and organized, staying at the center. For example, when you drive, you may zone out and not remember how you drove home. This is an example of extended cognition. In essence, it argues our mind can function independently for our body even though they're both controlled by the brain. Hello everyone, I'm Josea Maricela Unay Acuna. Now let's move on to true versus false selves. So Donald Winnicott distinguished what he called true self from the false self in the human personality. Considering the true self as a base and a sense of being in the experiencing body, while the false self as a necessary defensive organization or survival kit, a caretaker self means by which threatened person person has managed to survive. Now, true self has a sense of integrity of connected wholeness that harks to the early stage, while false self is used when the person has to comply with external rules such as being polite or otherwise following social codes. The false self constantly seeks to anticipate demands of other in order to maintain the relationship. There are two types of false selves. First, the healthy false self, which is functional and can be compliant but without the feeling that, that it has betrayed its true self. Then the other one is the unhealthy false self, which fits in but through a feeling of forced compliance rather than loving adaptation. Here are some examples of true versus false selves. Now let's move on to the last topic, the self as proactive and agentic. Self as proactive and agentic. First, proactive is someone who takes an active role in dealing with something before it needs to be taken care of. For example, a student studying for a fall semester class during their summer vacation. Now, in agentic self, 
it is defined as the as aspect of human personality that is determined by future assessment of one's goal, objectives, and actions. Agentic self-functions are adversely affected by degenerating planning, selecting and implementing the capabilities of individual. Examples of agentic behavior are dominance, self-promotion, and assertiveness. Now let's go to agent self. The agent self is known as the executive function that allows for action. This is how individuals make choices and utilize or control in situations and actions. The agent self resides over everything that involves decision-making, self-control, taking charge in situations, and actively responding. Like a person might desire to eat unhealthy foods, however, it is his her agent self that allows that person to choose to avoid eating them and make healthier food choice. Human agency is not a thing but an active process of exploring, manipulating, and influencing the environment in order to attain desired outcomes. Now let's move on to self-efficacy. Self-efficacy lies in the center of Bandura's social cognitive theory. It is the measure of one's ability to complete goals. People with high self-efficacy often are eager to accept challenges because they believe they can, they can overcome them. While people with low self-efficacy may avoid, may avoid challenges or believe experiences are more challenging than they actually are. In self as proactive and agentic, Albert Bandura believes that through our agency, we humans are perceived as proactive agents of experiences. Through this agents or agency, we humans play a big role in our self in our self development, adaptation, and self renewal. We humans we plan things intentionally or we do things intentionally. With doing this, we wait for possible outcomes. We make our plans, actions, and decisions with the basic of our intention in life. We as humans are interested in different things. We make ourselves interested in the things we do, therefore, acting with our intentions. For thought, on the other hand, enabled us, enables us to anticipate the consequences of the things we do. We expect different expectations, therefore we likely think better before we do or make decisions in the future. Self-reactiveness involves making choices. We make different choices and we actually make choices after thinking about the consequences. Self-reflectiveness gives us the ability to, to reflect on our decisions, choices, and consequences. That's the end of our topic.